Hello, I'm David Vileka, and today we're talking about dashboard layout. Assuming that you have all of the correct elements on your dashboard, the appropriate charts, important metrics, and necessary pieces, without a well-thought-out design, it could all be for naught. Unfortunately, many times so much effort is spent building out impressive charts that by the time we get to the dashboard, less attention is paid to how all of the pieces fit and play together. Think about your dashboard as a jigsaw puzzle. You may be able to fit the pieces together by brute force, but if you put them together in the incorrect places, you'll end up with a misshapen mess that doesn't look anything like it is supposed to. Fortunately, dashboards are a bit more forgiving. There's no one right way to build your dashboard, but there are definitely better ways. Let's look at some of the theory behind laying out an effective dashboard. Dashboard design doesn't really have to be hard, especially when we think about human nature. Many languages use a left to right path for words, and we've been trained to read most of what we see in that familiar pattern. This makes the top left corner of a dashboard the first place most people look, and therefore prime real estate. The viewer then typically continues through the dashboard with an F-shaped pattern as they move across and down to the next visual on the dashboard. The first line of the dashboard gets the most attention, and attention starts to wane as the user moves through the visual. Knowing that the top left corner is the first viewed region of a dashboard, we should reserve that corner for our headline visual, the vital bit of information that we want the viewer to take away even if they don't continue reading the dashboard. This is why some experts argue that we should fight the urge to put a company logo and title in this prime spot. There are definitely points against it, including that on an internal dashboard, everyone knows who they work for and don't need to be reminded of it every time they view a dashboard. However, there are just as many reasons for doing so. An unobtrusive logo and dashboard title combination can be an effective way to maintain and establish branding for a reporting group. If you're able to think back to a printed newspaper, each section of the paper has a title telling the reader what section they are reading. Most of the time, the header is unobtrusive, includes the paper's name and date, and maintains the branding from the front page. Regardless of your personal opinion here, make sure you prioritize your content so that your number one metric takes a place of prominence. When designing a dashboard, size matters, almost as much as placement. If you open a dashboard and there's a gigantic number in the bottom right corner of the page, there's probably no amount of human nature that is going to allow us to ignore it and start at the top left. Our eye is drawn to the large size of an element, and knowing this, we can choose to leverage this concept. Users don't have to be highly data literate to read a big number. If you're creating a sales dashboard and total sales is the main metric you want to communicate, don't be shy. Put that number out there for the taking. The same principle applies to other visuals as well. Use contrasting size to direct your user's attention to any key metric on your dashboard. Believe it or not, viewers suffer from something called repetition fatigue as they consume a dashboard. If you use the same element or chart type throughout a dashboard, the user is likely to stop consuming your data before making it all the way through the visualization. Instead of using the same bar charts throughout your dashboard, break it up with a column chart. This also should be a reminder that users have an attention span that we need to develop to. Determine who your typical user is and develop to them. You can likely cut out some repetitive elements just by slimming down your dashboard a bit. This will also help to keep your users from feeling overwhelmed when viewing your dashboard. Another note about repetition. If you use the exact same layout for all of your dashboards, I suggest mixing it up a bit. This will help to keep your user engaged with your reporting and avoid overall fatigue with all of your content. Even if you keep all of this in mind as you lay out your dashboards, there are still a few traps that can doom even the best intentioned visual. First, it's a dashboard, not a dash book. The average adult attention span is supposedly about 8 seconds. Keep the dashboard limited to related charts and data that make sense to be viewed together. 
and restrict it to the high level views that the typical user needs to do their job. Use interactivity to guide your user to more detailed data when necessary. Second, tell the data story. Similar to the last point, using cohesive visualizations that build upon each other can be an effective data storytelling tool. Third, less is more. Consider things like grid lines, excessive labels, color legends, etc. Do they contribute to the overall message or do they just cloud it? Are you already using other elements to tell the user what your colors mean? Do the grid lines really help your viewer know that furniture sold more than technology at Superstore in 2020? Cut them out if you don't need them. And last, summarize and get your message up front and center. You're building a dashboard, not a hidden pictures game. Use human nature and size to purposely place elements for effective communication. Thanks for watching. I hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions or comments or just want to connect, you can find me on LinkedIn, Twitter, Tableau Public, or my website at the links in the description.